not before long we can upgrade the science assemblers with the new modules, from 24% to a whopping 40% productivity bonus. Now we can allow these science productions again. Soon after, the labs are upgraded as well. And now we have theoretical access to all the non-infinite techs. What or what will we choose first? Something exciting, like artillery? Or plain old boring mining productivity or bot speed? What about Spiraltron perhaps? Decisions, decisions. Slowly but surely the time is coming. I thought we'd be good in here for much longer with the first expansion, but we've already burned through two thirds of our new resource patches before we even automated yellow and purple signs. We need to expand yet again. So to give yellow and purple signs production a head start, let's first research one tag that doesn't require yellow signs and one tag that doesn't require purple signs before choosing the very exciting tag of mining productivity tree. Yeah, we'll get to the cool stuff soon, but let's be responsible here and first get our hands on another 10% boost to our ore patches reserves and general rate of production, including for the free infinite oil source. But why Logistics 3? Bluebells are insanely expensive in terms of iron. Indeed, I am planning to stick with red belts for most of the base, but having access to blue belts can help solve some bottlenecks here and there. Especially the underground blue belt is super useful as it has two extra range compared to the red one. In fact, my battery production setup has been waiting for blue underground belts since its very creation, as I couldn't neatly lead out the battery belt from down below with only red belts. Okay, we've been responsible enough now. More mining productivity requires space science and rocket launches anyway, which are still a while off. It is time to have some fun! Yes! Atomic bombs! Now the biters will feel the wrath of... What? No? Alright, ah. Artillery to rain down fire from... Also, also no? Ah yes! Uranium ammo! The heaviest of all! Oh F this! Make up your mind dude already! Okay. Oh yeah! Mark 3 efficiency modules to swarm the biters with... What? Mark 3 efficiency modules? What the F dude? Ah, I see, I see. I never doubted you my friend. We shall rule the world together with Spidertron, the best armor in the game. But the question remains, will we ever get there with our rapidly diminishing resources? I made this overview to better estimate how much time we have left, and it's not looking great. And to make matters worse, the replacement resources are all located pretty far outside of the current base. Although after careful evaluation, maybe it's not that bad. We mainly need iron, copper, coal and oil, and while the far south does contain all of those, we decide on expanding to the nearby north section, even though it's missing oil. But as the coal patch is very rich, it will give our coal liquefaction plant an opportunity to shine and provide us with all the oil we need. So, let's start gearing up for war. First we scramble together the ingredients to make the two Mark III efficiency modules needed to make the Spidertron. But research has grinded to a crawl already. We are out of purple signs. Because we're out of productivity modules. We already applied the triple requester chest trick and while upgrading the assemblers to be three times as fast won't help solve the core problem of insufficient resources to make red chips, it does allow us to manually give production a quick boost by hand inserting a couple of stacks. And indeed, Spidertron was the reason to select rocket control units as the first stack along with logistics tree. Naturally, the spider requires 4 pairs of legs, 
Ant comes with a factory fitted quad rocket launcher. We also prepare some new personal equipment like 20 personal laser defenses. Where the heck are you gonna fit all of those? Then it is time for another legendary character to make its run tree. It is Ben, the spacefaring fish, the one true legend among his peers. But Ben the fish will not go to space today. Oh no, not this time. This time Ben shall play a much more significant role as the brain of the Spidertron. In this chest we collected all of the elements needed to construct the Spidertron. The power, the legs, the rocket launchers and of course our main star. Ben the fish starring as the brains behind the operation. Wait, where'd he go? Ben? Ben? Oh, whoops. Uh, sorry Ben, please forgive me for automatically putting you in my personal trash bin. Let me save you from the claws of that logistic bot. Phew. Fortunately Ben has the memory of a fish and this incident won't invoke any feelings of revenge to come back to haunt us in the future. Anyway, it is time to meet Spider Ben. Oh yeah! Do as I say Ben, not as I do. Now let me introduce you to the real strongest armor in the game. The Spidertron Enhanced Mark II Power Armor. Yes, those two elements now can function together as a single cooperative armor greater than the sum of its parts, with both pieces having a distinctive task. By fitting the outside shell of our armor with energy shields and extra legs for more speed, we don't need those anymore in the inside shell of our armor, freeing up all that extra inventory grid space for up to 20 personal laser defenses, which somehow still managed to flawlessly snipe biters straight from inside Spidertron's cockpit. Now that I've got the toys in front of my nose, I can't control myself any longer. I'm craving for that good old booze of catharsis. Let's go! Take this! Hand that! Eat rockets, you biter scum! Give me your best shot, I won't even make evasive moves anymore. This is pure power! At least it will be for the short time until the behemoths arrive. They are gonna change everything. But until that moment arrives, we are going to enjoy the heck out of being OPSF. Yeah, baby!
We can even rely solely on the power armor's laser offense for the smaller bases, tanking all the damage through the spider's energy shields and massive damage resistance. Biter used bite attack. It's not very effective. Big Worm used Acid Dead Ray. Spider Ben is too strong. Iron patch cleared. Those are some dense nests though. Let's apply the circle strafe and wind technique. The biters have the hardest time even taking down my shields, let alone make a dent in the massive hit point bank of Spider Ben himself. Lost in the forest, you biter scum. We don't even need rockets for the small expansions. Thanks to the spider armor taking over the defensive task, our personal power armor is filled to the brim with more laser power than an aquarium full of sharks with laser beams attached to their freaking heads. We haven't forgotten about our mission to save the trees though, and while we utilize the explosive rockets out in the open, we try to use only the lasers wherever there are forests nearby. And that's the coal source cleared. Well, that was fun while it lasted, but now the era of the behemoth biters and the behemoth spitters is starting to begin. <laughs> 